So, g'day. Uh, excitement for today is uh, delivery. It just came through from the um, United States. It's a um, vintage Hagström 2. Um, let's pick it up from the post office. So let's open it up and see what we find inside. It was supposed to have been uh, dismantled with the neck taken off the body to save a bit on shipping. It's always a good idea. But it arrived in a, in a full-size box. So not sure if that actually took place or not. So we'll still find out. Now I'm going to require a knife. came in a cardboard box. Personally, I probably would have put um, a bit of bubble wrap or some more padding. I suppose if it's lived, uh, lived 53 years, then uh, it's gonna hang in there a little bit longer, eh? So let's have a look. Yeah, that's nice. It's um, pretty much exactly as it appeared on the images. This was bought on, uh, on Reverb. A few little scratches around the sides, nothing I didn't expect. Frets are in reasonable condition, certainly no need to refret it anytime soon. Back of the neck, a few little nicks. Doesn't really need much done to it. Um, all I'll probably plan to do is I'll probably put new strings on. Although these strings are fairly new. I'm gonna put a bit of oil on the fretboard, give it a good clean up, and the um, the, the whammy bar has uh, gone missing at some point or another. So, what is that? That's a tube. So I need to make up one of those. Not a big drama. Volume control, track plug. That pickup looks like it's been. Uh, looks like it's lost one of its metal. If you can see that on there. Um, these pickups have like little metal discs that fit inside the holes, and looks like one of them has, has fallen out. That may cause that string to ring slightly lower in volume, so I'll probably have to make up something to put in there. Well, all that said and done, not a bad nick actually. Can I have a look, Alex? Yeah. Check it out. Is that right? What is it? 63 years old? 53 years old? 53 years old, yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, they are famous for their necks, you know. You can actually see the truss rod at the tail end there. If you look here, you can see that's that's that um, profile that they're famous for. Oh yeah, it's quite exposed there. Yeah, as you can see the whole. Normally there's a sticker <coughs> over there, mm -hmm. a little little metal plate type of thing. And we can see it on the camera here. You can see the shape of the of the truss rod in there. That's what makes these necks. Well, one would say world famous. Okay, now that seems seems quite good. Okay, I'll uh, check back in when I get ready to set it up. Okay, so I'm just going to take off the uh, and inspect. There's a little bit of scratching in the switches. So, uh, I'm going to have a look at what's happening behind the board here. Oh yeah, so that's pretty, pretty straightforward and clean. The top switch here is just a kill switch. So that's when you flick that on, it just goes straight to earth. As Alex is saying, that's handy if, um, if you're using a clip-on tuner. You can just kill the signal and, and tune. Um, this switch is scra scraped a little bit, so I'm going to just apply some switch lubricant and cleaner. And the same with the pot. And then I'm just going to put it back together. There's nothing that needs any changing here. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of lubricant in there. Wiggle the switches back and forth a little bit. Do the 
the same with the pot. The two last switches here, they are just a uh, tone type switch, which um, affects the tone a little bit. They're basically one's a capacitor, the other one's just a resistor, so nothing magical going on. I'm just going to leave all that exactly as it is, I think. Put that back together. Yeah, so this uh, Hogstrom has a few little nicks and, and cracks and stuff like that on it that it's obviously had over the years. Now I'm not going to respray this or anything like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of PVA glue in this in these cracks just to stabilize them so that they don't um, get any worse basically. Um, that's uh, because it's not, well, you know. It's a 53 year old guitar. I don't want it to look brand new. If I wanted a new one, I'd buy a new guitar. So, um, just putting a little bit of PVA glue in here that will go underneath the, the loose, little bit of loose paintwork and also seal the area which is exposed. That's what I did with my, my previous uh, Harkstrom as well. So that's all it needs there, really. I'm just gonna let that let that dry and then clean off the excess. Then we're gonna string her up. See what it sounds like. Okay, so um, I've had a bit of a closer look at the at the Hog Tram 2 and you can see it here. And what I've noticed is that there's a little bit of fret wear. Let's see if we can get in here and see it's a, it's a tiny tiny amount of fret wear along here. The neck is still pretty good condition, it's pretty straight. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, straight piece of wood, you can see it, nice and straight. I'm going to use some double sided tape, I'm going to put some sandpaper on the one surface and I'm just going to condition condition those frets just a little bit, just to um, make the action a little more playable. Um, and it's really playable as it is, so I'm probably just being nitpicky. But hey, that's me. Okay, so uh, here I got some um, double-sided tape. It's a uh, Express It tape. That's quite a good one, multi-purpose tape. It's a uh, double-sided tape which doesn't have any foam on it, so it's a uh, it's a very thin double-sided tape. So I'm gonna just stick that on this piece of wood here, along like that. Take the sand, sandpaper, the one I have here is 400 grit. So I'll sneak that on. on there, pushing it down onto the tape, and then basically just tear it off and lining it up as well as we can. Continue onwards. Now we have a emery stick, pretty straight. So um, this is, you know, not a not a scientific method. Um, you can you can go and spend the money and getting your guitar plexed and stuff like that. And uh, some people swear by that. Um, fair enough. I find that this this works pretty good. So now all we need is a bit of patience. Now, um, as you've noticed, I've been going back and forth a lot um, over the fretboard, and that causes little sandpaper marks going across the frets. So when you go to, to bend notes, you'll get a little <coughs> as it scrapes across these little scratches. So I'm going to finish off by moving back and forth over the over the frets so that the scratches become top to bottom. So when you're bending notes, you're not getting that kind of little scrapey sound happening. And that's just done by 
going over it uh, again in this direction. That does look pretty good. Um, I'm now going to apply a little bit more oil to the fretboard just because this fretboard was very dry. Probably hadn't been oiled for 50 years. So I'm just using a um, orange oil. Um, first I'm just going to clean, clean it a little bit. So I'm just using a, a window type cleaner. Just get off some of that black metallic dust that was created when we um, when we sanded the frets. Okay. That feels really good. So I'm gonna be a bit generous with this because as I said it probably hasn't been old in a long time so I'm just gonna rub that in with my fingers. Let that absorb into the timber. Make that all nice and nice and refreshed. Wipe it off a bit. You can see there's still black stuff coming off. So wiping that off. The clean rag. A bit, more. a bit of a glop there. there. Right, that's a bit cleaner. Beautiful. I'm rubbing a bit on the back of the neck as well because um, there was a few chips and things so that where the um, varnish had come off. As you can see here, there's a few little marks and I've sanded those back a little bit and I'm just rubbing some, rather than re-varnishing the neck, I'm just rubbing a bit of oil in there to, to protect it and keep the timber happy. And that's, this is just part of the maintenance of an old guitar. I mean, um, I do this to all my, all my guitars fairly regularly. Uh, it's not something I do once and then forget about it. Every, I don't know, every four times when I change strings, or every second time, depending on how long it's been. I will give it a good clean down and a bit of oil on the fretboard, a bit of oil on the tuning pegs, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a machine. Uh, it's a musical machine. It does need maintenance, just like a, a car or a lawnmower, depending on what your favorite transportation method is. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to leave that oil now to, to suck into the timber, uh, probably overnight. Um, tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll come back and I will um, put new strings on, string it up. I have to see if I can get a, um, a metal bar that fits into the truss rod fitting there, because I'd like to, uh, sorry, into the whammy bar fitting. Um, because um, I, have, I haven't got another guitar with a whammy bar. I've never really had one, never wanted one. But since this one has one on there, I thought well, it might be fun to give it a bit of a go. Because my ultimate plan for this guitar, actually, I want to put my guitar synthesizer on it. I'm not doing any damage to it. It's just going to be mounted with, um, with some double-sided tape or something that doesn't do any damage. And I thought it would be interesting to see how the, uh, the whammy bar goes on, uh, on the synth. Because this, is quite a, this synth tracks really well. It's a Roland uh, guitar synth. Um, not a new one, it's one of the older ones, but it's got a really good tracking for pitch bend. You can get really delicate little little bends out of the synth. So um, that's that's my plan for this instrument. Um, now hopefully to, tomorrow I'll have it all strung back up and ready to play as an electric guitar without the synth attachment. And tomorrow night there's actually a jam on uh, in uh, Newcastle that I'm hoping to take it to. And um, maybe I'll, I'll bring my camera and I'll actually play a little bit live to see what this thing sounds like um, up with the, with the good guys. So um, let's cross our fingers for that one, eh? Um, 
Okay, well, till tomorrow, which for you will be a second away, but for me it's actually overnight. Um, see how we go. Now, the original Hagström and what was released back in the um, mid 70s, I suppose, or early 70s, had a cover on the switches and the volume control that had some writing on it with something like this. So I quickly made one up on the computer. This is just a paper. Uh, I have some white sticker, plastic vinyl sticker that I'm going to print it on uh, eventually. But I just want to, I'm just measuring to see that it fits. So it uh, kind of fits. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pick guard off. I'm going to take this plate off, make sure I get an exact match, uh, clean it right back with some acetone or something so I get a good stick, then stick the vinyl sticker on and then put it back on with all the components in it so it kind of looks like it originally did, I suppose. So I'm going to do that now. So I've taken the screws out and um, this plate comes off. It's got a bit of double-sided tape on the back, I think. Clean that. Um, I'm not sure if this is the original plate or if it's something that's been retro made. I don't know if you can see, but if you look at it closely, it looks a little kind of jaggedy and, and hand done. So it's possible that this is a plate that's been made later on. But I can't see what, why that would have been the case. Anyway, or maybe they were kind of semi-handmade in the factory back then, it's, it's hard to say. You know, maybe that's how they made them, they filed out the holes a little bit. So anyway, I have my little template thing here, so I'll see how that, basically that's going to be stuck onto this plastic bit and then I'm just going to screw it back on. So, um, I'll just measure up my actual bits, catch the ticket. Um, so, um, as I suspected, the, uh, that little um, cover plate was uh, a retrofit. It was made after, after the guitar was made. And as a result of that, it, for some reason it was made smaller than the original would have been, so the artwork wouldn't fit on this plate. So you can see I've printed out the artwork here, and, and that's what it would look like on the guitar. And it is a fair bit smaller than this, so I'm going to have to cut a new plate. Uh, that was no big deal, I got this plastic laying around the workshop, so I'll just... Uh, glue the sticker onto a, a plastic plate and cut it out, drill a few holes in it and be ready to rock and roll. So I'll do that now. Now the other thing um, that I need to do on this guitar before I put it back together again is the uh, the whammy, you can see that here, the, uh, the whammy bar rod is missing. So that needs to be a 5mm rod, of course being Australia being a metric country you can't get a 5mm rod. I could find a 5mm screw and I could find a 5.5mm rod, which is obviously some imperial measurement converted. So I'm just going to weld that to the end of it and then bend it up a little bit so, that, so I have the, the whammy bar, bar back with the heat shrink at the end. Um, then I'm going to throw the strings back on, give it a tune up, uh, adjust the intonation. And then I'm planning to take it to a jam tonight and see what it sounds like. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to film that too. Okay, so now the new plate is on and I've made some kind of whammy bar replacement thing. This is all a little bit uh, rough and ready, but uh, I will at some point in the future do a bit more of a proper job. I just want to get this plate all by tonight. So, um, next thing is to put some strings on. So, I've kind of put it all together now. We've got the, the whammy bar happening, uh, we've got the temporary plastic cover here it's quite and it is quite temporary too so while I'm waiting for something else to to dry in the workshop I'm actually gonna I'm gonna start making the proper one I'm gonna use some clear perspex and I'm gonna put the image behind the perspex as I screw it on so that it's, it shines through from behind it so, but it's not actually perspex it's a polycarbonate which is uh, like perspex but it's um, unbreakable almost pretty good stuff Okay, so I've, um, okay, so I ended up making a new Perspex plate. I just cut it out of clear Perspex and, and glued a laser print to the back of it. Looks alright. 
Um, so I'm just putting um, putting the big guard back on here, putting the screws in. The other thing that this guitar didn't have is it didn't have um, dots on the side of the neck, only on the front, which is a bit awkward actually because you can't really see. Certainly not when I play. I don't look at the front of the, of the fretboard. I tend to look at the top of the neck. So um, I've just drilled some tiny little indentations along the um, along the side of the neck for, for each dot, and uh, I just put a little bit of um, liquid paper. So all I've got to do now is just trim that up a little bit because uh, inevitably you spill a little bit on the side. So a little bit of fine sandpaper. I can just trim that back. The uh, the dots will stay because they're indented, and when I sand it, it'll just clean up around it. That should work out and then just tune her back up and should be ready to take it to the jam tonight. Should be quite a big so I think of a new maybe excess. There's your markers on the side of the neck. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, string wander here somewhere. Turn it back up. that and then uh, see what it sounds like.